Hi everybody, Carrie Balkan here. Welcome back into my classroom. Super excited as always for you to be here with me today. Unstructured transition times are these big chunks of time after learning has occurred, not the short transitions from one project to the next project or one um, station to the next station. These big chunks of time, two to three to four minutes where your students are doing act or doing something that's unstructured. Generally, most of our students during this time will take it upon themselves to figure out an activity that they like. They'll draw, they'll sit, um, they'll socialize with each other. But then we have these other students that just don't know what to do during this unstructured time. So what happens to us as teachers that it's a time when we get to transition to the next activity, get our things organized, get ready for the next class, get ready for the next lesson. But instead we have these students that don't know what to do. Either they get into trouble, either they annoy the other students, or they just sit there and they don't know how to engage because it's just too unstructured and doesn't have enough guidelines to them. So today, I wanna to talk to you about how we can take our unstructured transition time and turn it into fun, structured learning opportunities. So let's get started. So this all started with my students' love for Connect Four. I sat down and created a, a theme for the game, and I decided to call it King of Connect Four. So after I rethemed Connect Four, calling it King of Connect Four, so it's a battle of Connect Four, one versus one, I sat down with my students and we created the rules. We created a structure for this play. So there wouldn't be any guesswork, and there wouldn't have to be any social navigation between the two players. Everybody would sit down at the table and they would know how to play the game. And then we also talked about what would happen at the end of the game, what would happen with the winner. And we established that, those guidelines and those rules. And finally, we also talked about what a good sport looks like, what does winning sound like, what does losing sound like, and what does it sound like when a game ends and how do two players end a game. And by adding, by creating all of those guidelines together, providing that structure of ex, um, expectations in that game, I was able to to tape those rules onto the table, lay this, lay the Connect Four, um, put the Connect Four game on the table for the students to play, and then let them just take over. And what happened was absolutely amazing. Guidelines and expectations that I had established allowed the students to play the game and navigate all the social situations and all the nuances that games bring all themselves. And what that allowed for me to do was to step away, to get ready for my next class, to talk to my teaching assistants, to to manage different parts of the classroom and it allowed my students that might have needed a little bit more structure during these transition times to have expectations and clear guidelines that allowed them to interact with each other in a really awesome way to play a game to have fun but also like secretly adding these really wonderful opportunities for them to build some really wonderful skills now I know I'm not the only one that has challenges transition times. I know I'm not the only one with ideas about what, how to structure unstructured transition time. I would love to hear any ideas that you have in your classroom for how you structure unstructured time, these big chunks of time between activities so that I can add to my toolbox or add to my next table tournament game. I would love for you to leave a comment down below and tell me how you, what ideas you have in your classroom that you use. So until next time, you guys, remember, whether it's bringing out the best in your students, learning, creating, or just being you, there are no rules. Later, guys.